Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Kubernetes video. In Kubernetes, we oftentimes need to run applications in a high availability state, but with only one member of the set of members serving requests at a time. For this, we use Kubernetes leases to control which member can serve requests. In this video, I'm going to talk about how Kubernetes leases work and the different functionalities that they have within Kubernetes. So let's get into it. First of all, leases in general in distributed systems are used to coordinate members of a set and to lock shared resources. Within Kubernetes, they're used to monitor node health via node heartbeats and also for component level leader election. That means when we are running an application, we use the Kubernetes at least API in order to ensure that a single member of a high availability setup is servicing requests at one time. And the diagram to the right hand side here shows how that works. We have three replicas in our setup. At the moment, replica one has the lock and the lock specifies that the current leader is replica one. The last observed time is two minutes past three and that is set on regular intervals by replica one because replica one is serving the requests. The least duration is 10 seconds which means that replica one has to update the last observed time at least every 10 seconds. If the least duration expires and the last observed time goes beyond that 10 second duration one of the other members of the set will then be able to acquire the lock and start serving requests. This is how we keep high availability in an application that we want only a single member to be serving requests at one time. Kubernetes also utilizes the lease API for node heartbeats. Node heartbeats allow us to monitor the health of nodes within our Kubernetes cluster. And for each node, a lease object is created in the cube node lease namespace. So kubelet, our node agent, sends update requests to the lease object. And via this, that is how the Kubernetes API learns about the health of the node. So it uses the object timestamp, i.e. the timestamp that is specified on the lease to determine the availability of the node. And we can look at an example for this. So let me just pull up my terminal. So if we do k get leases dash a, we can see that we have this cube node lease namespace. So for the two nodes that we have specified here, we have a lease for each. And if we look at the details of the lease, We can see here the owner of this lease is a node. We've specified the node name. The node name and the lease name are the same in the case of these uh, leases created to monitor node health. The lease duration is 40 seconds and the renew time specified here is essentially the current time because Kubelet sends the update request every 10 seconds. So this will be updated on a regular basis. Base. We get it again, it'll be updated again two minutes uh, since our last update. So that is how we use leases for node heartbeats and monitoring node health in Kubernetes. However, as we said, we also use leases for leader election in Kubernetes. So to recap, we use this to ensure one instance of a service is serving requests. The components that use leases for leader election are Kube Scheduler, Kube Controller Manager, cloud, the Cloud Controller Manager, 
and potentially other components depending on your cluster setup. So if we come back here, run our get leases, we can see that we have under the cube system namespace, we have leases for cube scheduler, cube controller manager, and the GCP controller manager, because this is a GKE cluster. On the right hand side, we have again, the YAML for a cube scheduler lease. In this case, the lease duration is only 15 seconds. Finally, in Kubernetes version 1.26 and later, the API server has started to receive leases or for each individual member of the set of API server pods that we have, there will be a lease associated with that pod. It is used to identify API server instances and it allows API server instances to coordinate and clients to determine the number of instances available. So this by itself doesn't have a huge amount of utility. However, it is used to enhance the uh, potential functionality within Kubernetes for those who are using it. So if you have an application that requires knowledge of the API server instances that are running, then you can now use this functionality via the lease API. So that is my video on leases in Kubernetes. I hope that was useful for you. If you have any questions, please do leave a comment. Please like and subscribe and I will get back to you in the next video.